night. You can either sleep with them or put them in your mouth for a few hours at a time. And over a period of a couple of weeks, you will whiten your teeth. Works best on yellow stained teeth. Gray teeth are hard to whiten. So if you if you got gray teeth, may not get the results you want. Method number two is in-office whitening. There's something that a lot of people heard of called Zoom. We do Zoom whitening and other products where you have a much more strong gel put over your teeth while you're in the chair so we can supervise it. Uh, gets good results. Um, a lot of people have sensitivity with this. So it's, you know, no pain, no gain kind of theory. Mm. And then we have another technique, which I don't know if we're the only ones doing it in town. It's featured on my website. It's called deep bleaching. There's a dentist in California who invented this technique, which involves both in-office and take-home, special gel, has to be refrigerated, very precise, and we've got some amazing results for that. Much more expensive than the other two methods, but a lot less expensive than veneers or, or, uh, or bonding. So can there's you different eat ways to do when it. When you do this, what's another well, way at home? What when the trays are in your mouth, you obviously can't eat. Mm. And you should avoid, while you're doing it, red wine, black coffee, tea, mm. smoking. I mean, it's sort of common sense. You want to give your teeth the best chance to whiten as you can. If you like your red wine, you may have to sacrifice mm. and go to white for a few weeks oh, okay. while you're doing this. But um, it's, again, it's a, really, uh, it's a really nice way to, to enhance your smile and, again, create that a good, uh, it a good makes impression. A it does make a difference I, because I'm telling you, I deal with this all day long and I tell people it makes a difference how your hair is cut, how you groom yourself. A lot of people think it doesn't, but it really does. You don't understand that. First, someone sums you up. I think it's three seconds or something. I read where it's in three seconds, someone gets an opinion kind of uh, of whether they think you're attractive or not attractive. It, and even your personality comes into it. In just three or four seconds, I read something where a person looks at someone and they register an idea of well, what they think of you. It's sort of like that old song, you know, when you're smiling, the whole world <laughs> smiles with you. I think when you're smiling and you're feeling good about yourself and somebody smiles back at you, you know, you, you see that other person with an attractive smile. There's, there's definitely, I don't know, it's not endorphins, but it's something your body releases that gives you a little bit of a rush that you feel good. You feel good about yourself. You feel good about that person. If you don't have that smile that you deserve or you want, it's sort of have to, have tough to get that feeling when your teeth are black or crooked or missing or what have you. Yeah. All right, you're on 9 Linden Street. Whereabouts is that in the city? If uh, Linden Street is actually a couple blocks from here. It, um, it's two blocks up from Main Street, heading towards Park Avenue. Yeah. Uh, my office is in a, a one-story building between Pleasant Elm Street. It is a one-way street, and if you're coming off of Salisbury or Highland Street, uh, it's near the Art Museum. So if you go down that street, you run into it. Uh, I've been in this location for about... I'd say about 18 years. Uh, the building has been in existence for 40 years. It's always been a dental building. Right yeah, now, parking. there plenty of parking okay. behind the building, right. uh, which is sort of nice when you're near downtown that you got that parking. Uh, we're open um, Monday through Thursday. We have early hours and late hours. We do uh, Fridays special appointments. Uh, so we have a pretty flexible schedule for people to get in and uh, be seen. Okay, say so an emergency comes up, which I've had. Uh, something happens and you're really in pain. Uh, can you slide someone in there? <laughs> we, we, yeah, we have a rule of thumb with emergencies. Uh, emergency is a, is a toothache, a lost crown, mm. <laughs> or, uh, or pain, or an abscess, or an infection, or something. And uh, again, I'm like um, a physician. You know, we don't have people calling us day and night. Mm. I don't have a million messages at right. the end of the day to return calls. You know, I try to be very accommodating. Um, one of the things that makes my job enjoyable is the people I work with, the patients that come in. We try to have a friendly atmosphere, yeah. relaxed, Great and uh, we want to be able to, uh, you know, help people, which is the name of the game. Okay. Uh, gum disease. What causes bad breath? Bad breath very often is caused by, by gum disease. Mm. Uh, is the bacteria uh, get in your mouth, they produce an odor, a malodor, and uh, if you leave food debris between your teeth because you don't floss, that can create odor. But if you treat that and you still have an odor, it may be due to a digestive issue where you need to see a medical doctor for that. So it's not always, although most of the time it is due to the fact your gums aren't as healthy as they should be, and plaque and germs are building up and they create an odor. Okay, brushing. We have them in the old days, three times a day. Uh, what would you suggest to somebody out there? Well, we, we suggest brushing twice a day is adequate as long as you're brushing correctly. Mm. I don't have a toothbrush to demonstrate, yeah. but um, when you come into the office, the hygienist goes over with you, good brushing technique. 
uh, flossing, how to floss properly. We also feel very strongly about uh, certain types of uh, electric brushes, like we recommend Sonicare toothbrushes because in my mind and our experience with our patients, brushes like that do a better job, especially for people whose dexterity isn't as good as it used mm. to be. You know, when you're, when you're 20 or 30 years old, you scrub, it's no big deal, but you get a person in their 70s and 80s with a little bit of an arthritic condition, mm. that electric type or sonic type brush moving around their mouth is going to allow them to do a, a better job. Oh, wow. So we like that a lot. Do you hear that, Frank, Rocco? See, now even you can brush, see, for someone in their 90s. Uh, with time's running out, and he's going to take our little <laughs> test here. Anything, Stan, you want to get on up to the R's uh, before we... Uh, no, uh, it, you know, we touched a lot of subjects, mm. Tommy. Uh, if, if people want to learn more about these topics, mm. uh, check out my website. It's levinsonsmile.com. Uh, there's a lot of information. Again, with websites today, there are pages and pages of information and links to other specific topics yeah. you're interested in. So, you know, we touched upon a lot of important things, but there may be other information yeah. that wasn't Firstly, answered. Yeah, give him a call. Like I said, give me a call. I can direct you to him. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure you're out there thinking now, geez, I haven't been there five years. So even if you've been at a dentist, you might not be happy with your dentist now. This guy's top shelf. He's the best. He's got the latest stuff, and he's very understanding and accommodating. Like you said, his staff, you go in, they make you feel very welcome. Because I know sometimes you go to a dentist or a doctor, the intimidation of it sometimes turns you off. These people make you feel like your family right away, even your first visit. So uh, give me a call. Call Stan, uh, 9 Linden Street. You've got, you've got the number up there? Why don't you just say the number out loud? Yeah, it's 508-753-3105. Uh, Very good. Okay, Stan, are we ready here? I am. Okay. Um, this is it. You can have <laughs> one. This is one answer. That's it. You, so you can only watch right. one TV show the rest of your life. They say, this is it, Stan. You're going to have one show. What would it be? Uh, Law and Order SVU. Very good. Okay, that's very popular. A lot of people get that answer. <laughs> one movie. You know, you watch this movie uh, the rest of your life. The Godfather, the first Godfather, one. First one, number one, okay. Uh, your favorite food. You can only eat this one thing, that's it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a carnivore. I like uh, sirloin steak. Okay, jeez, red meat. <laughs> Shannon, you upset back there? Vegetarian? Okay, favorite music. You can only listen to this one uh, music the rest of your life. One music or one artist? One artist, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll say the Beatles. Really? Showing okay. my generation. Okay. Your favorite actor? Uh, favorite actor, uh, Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Favorite actress? Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, really? Yeah. That, well, we've never had that before, <laughs> okay? Maybe he won't get killed when he gets home either. Okay? Your favorite place? You can be one place in the whole world. Vacation place, uh, your name? I like Aruba. Aruba, okay. All right. Your favorite sport? Uh, baseball. Baseball? Okay, what's one thing that bothers you about the Worcester area? Uh, it seems like we take uh, one step forward and two back. It's uh, yeah. a lot of energy, but it uh, you always can't, seem to, get, can't yeah. seem to get moving. There's a lot of negativity. Right. Uh, you know, I'm not a native. I've been here over 20 years. I've had a great life here, so I'm positive right. about Worcester. Okay, and what do you find good about the Worcester area? Uh, the people. I mean, I find good in people everywhere. Yeah. I think people like you, people in the community I meet, the people that I associate with are positive people. Mm. Uh, so, you know, that's what I like about it. Very good. Come back and see us. It's give a him pleasure. a call, really. Get your teeth whitened. <laughs> He's an amazing guy. Give him a call. Give me a call. I'll set you up, okay? Good boy. Thank you. Thank you, Stan.